Good morning, good morning, good morning, Radio Land. Good morning. Wake up. It's time. It's the Fresh Start Show with Dr. Holt. Listen, one of the best shows in the nation. There's no show that looks or exists like us, a show that focuses on justice reform, mental health, and the struggles of being incarcerated. Um, so uh, you all hear me say every Saturday, let's get up and uh, get your favorite coffee, your mocha latte, your cream of wheat, your oatmeal, and the bagel with cream cheese. It's the Fresh Start Show. Um, we are excited to be here on this Saturday morning, and I just want to thank all of my supporters um, who have been supporting us from day one. We are here on 106 The Groove every Saturday morning at 730. And listen, I've been getting awesome feedback and um, letters in the mail. I didn't expect to get letters from people who are incarcerated, letting us know that this show has been an inspiration for them. This show have uh, brought hope back to them. Um, I got letters uh, from our friends that are in prison, state and federal, um, that is letting us know that they really appreciate this show. They look forward to the show. This show is like a breath of fresh air. Uh, to our brothers and sisters who's um, incarcerated and this is what we are here for this show is to uh, talk about the issues of reform talk about the issues um, that people who are incarcerated or people who have been formerly incarcerated are still going through in this nation we know in this nation if you get a felony um, in our country um, your future can really be challenging now, it doesn't mean your future is over but it does mean you will have some hurdles. Um, it doesn't mean that your future is a total disaster. But we do know in this country, if you have a felony background, um, you will have some major challenges on getting back on your feet. Is it impossible? No. But will you have some difficulties? Sometimes, yes. And also in the state of Arizona, we know if you have a felony in Arizona, you can you will be disenfranchised uh, for certain civil rights. You won't be able to vote. You won't be able to have the rights to bear arms and things of that nature. And so um, we have around 200,000 people in Arizona who is disenfranchised from even having the ability to vote because of their background. On top of that, we know that when you have a um, uh, issue of being incarcerated with a felony it's hard to get housing it's hard to get a job it's not as easy as people make it sound and because i'm a doctor in trauma um, i do also understand that can you get ptsd from being in prison can you have paranoia in prison can you have psychiatric disorders in prison and the answer is yes um, can you struggle with addictions and substance abuse and the answer is yes and so even from primary care or from a mental health perspective um, we must be concerned about people who are incarcerated and be, in, um, and be concerned about those who have been formerly incarcerated so listen my name is Dr. Holden I'm the host of this show but I'm also the founder of Fresh Start International Organization and our whole vision and mission is our statement is where everyone deserves a new beginning I believe that regardless of what you've done, if you're ready to get back on your feet and you've learned from making bad choices that got you in prison in the first place, I believe society um, should give you a new beginning. You should be able to have a second chance to get your life together. And so um, that's why we are here and that our show is here um, to speak into the issues um, that formerly incarcerated people go through, speaking to the issues of justice reform. We know bail reform is needed. We know a lot of people um, are struggling because of our bail system, the way it's designed, um, getting arrested and sitting in jail, um, our county jail for months and months. And what happens is people lose their jobs because they can't go to work sitting in jail. As a result, because you're not earning income, you lose your home um, as a result for sitting in jail. As a result, you lose your car because you can't make income as a result from sitting in jail. So we create homelessness and we create poverty because of the bail the bail system that we have. So there's so many areas that we can go with this, um, uh, talking about the struggles of people who have been incarcerated and talk about the struggles um, that people's engagement with police of how it starts in the first place and we know in our and in, in just in our county alone african-americans represent four or five percent um in our community 
and we overrepresent in our county jail. I've seen numbers from 10, uh, 11, 12, 13 percent. I don't know where we exactly are right now. Uh, but the fact that I, the fact of the matter is, we know we also have racial disparity issues as well, and poor people as well. Um, people who can't um, afford legal counsel um, is another reason why people sit in jail, and because they don't have legal counsel, they just plea out. Um, without really defending uh, their case. And so there's so many ways we go with this when we see people who have been incarcerated and we do know that there are issues with uh, poor Americans and communities of color um, in regards to some of these disparities as well. Well, listen, um, I've always uh, let you know every, um, every show that uh, the Fresh Start Expo will be at the Tucson Convention Center on Saturday. October 22nd from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. We want you to meet us. Um, I just met with Mayor Romero. She's excited to partner with Fresh Start again. Um, so we're going to be down at the convention center again this October at on Saturday from 9 a.m. Uh, to 1 p.m. We're going to have all our courts there like we did last year, our city courts, our justice courts, our superior courts, our juvenile um, <clears throat> courts. Um, our public defenders, our county attorney, they will all be there to work with people. Um, number one, people who have been formerly incarcerated, we're going to help you to get your conviction set aside as last year. We're going to help you to get your voters right. So in the next election, if you do your due diligence, you may be able to vote in the next midterms or next elections that's coming up. Um, we're also going to be helping people not to be incarcerated by working with the city and the county. Um, to warrant squash. We do have people with pending warrants um, and they have to look over their back, taking a risk to drive, knowing the license is suspended and they got a uh, failure to appears and outstanding warrants. Listen, Fresh Start is here to help you at this event. So you most definitely want to get down there on October 22nd uh, so we can help you get back on your feet. We will have second chance there where we're going to do a job fair for people with felony backgrounds to help you as well walk away with a job. We will have doctors, primary care, dentists, behavioral health, mental health. If you're having issues um, with mental health and psychiatric disorders, we're going to be able to help you in that capacity. So listen, Fresh Start is the real deal, one-stop shop of reentry. There's nothing like us in the entire nation. It is a one-stop shop on purpose. You are able to handle most of your reentry issues by being at one place at one time. You can warn, get your warrant squash. We help you with court fees. We help you get your license reinstated. We help you get your rights restored. We're going to help you get your conviction set aside. We're going to help you if you have addiction problems. Um, we're going to help you if you have behavioral health and mental health issues. You will be able to um, sign up and make an appointment with a primary, primary care doctor. We will have El Rio there. Um, so for some people who have been in prison haven't really had a good, thorough physical checkup. You're going to be able to do that at the Fresh Start. We will be offering free child care. So if you don't have anyone to babysit your kids, um, bring it you, bring you and your children down to the event, and we're going to be able to babysit your kids um, or provide child care while you go take care of your business. So it's nothing like us, and we want uh, everyone in the city of Tucson and surrounding areas to come and take advantage of this uh, very, very amazing event. All right, we'll come back later on at the end of the show, talk a little bit more about Fresh Start Expo in October. Um, we also have our Fresh Start fundraiser on August 19th um, at the um, Fre um, St. Andrew's First, uh, St. Andrew's Presbyterian Church in Tucson, Arizona. And Laura Conover will be our keynote um, speaker and uh, Mero Mero will be there as well. Um, and so we are looking for a great time um, if you want to uh, be part of our fundraiser, we are doing $35 per person and we are doing uh, tables of eight for 250 So if your organization, your agency or your team wants to come, um, we will be there. Well, listen, we have a great show, great episode. I have a special guest, my good friend, um, the, the newly appointed chief of police for Tucson, um, Chief uh, Chad Kasmar um, is my special guest. Um, he's a good friend of mine. I've been knowing each other for a good amount of years. And I've been knowing him since he was a commander. And I told him why he was a commander. I said, I believe you're going to be 
<laughs> He'll validate this. I think you're going to be uh, our, our chief one day in the future. You know, don't know when, don't know how it will work. Um, but I did tell him that. And, um, and as I n began to grow in relationship with Chief Kazimar, um, just just a just an all around good guy, and I'm not saying that because we're friends. Um, I'm saying that he is the real deal. Um, we are really excited to have him as our chief. We are very fortunate to have a chief like Chad being with being our leader for law enforcement for the city of Tucson, and uh, we're just excited to have him here with us. And so, I want to welcome Chief Chad Kazmar to the Fresh Start Show. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for having me. So how you doing, sir? I'm doing fantastic. How about you? <laughs> busy, man. <laughs> and I know you're the epitome of busy. So so tell me in the last seven days, what's your schedule been looking like? Last seven days. Um, it's been busy. We had uh, we had uh, a busy work week. We had some great community events with the World Refugee Day on Saturday morning that started over at Amphi High School. Yeah. Uh, where our refugee community got together and, and broke bread and sang songs and interacted. It was great seeing the kids running around. That's some amazing food, uh, wow. by the way. So, in fact, it was such a success. I think we're going to have to move over to the TCC next year because we were packed. Wow. Uh, and it was at Ampho High School, which was fun for me because that's where I graduated. So oh, okay. Back in my old stomping grounds. Um, but uh, And then, of course, Juneteenth was amazing. It was a little warm, but yeah. we got a little rain in the afternoon to cool, yeah. and a little breeze to cool it off. But yeah. uh, really good uh, community events uh, that were safe. Everybody had a great time. You know, un unfortunately, we saw that not be the case in other parts of the country. So I'm just... Yeah. I was thankful that we had uh, a beautiful weekend with with uh, no 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 major issues to report at those events. So it was awesome. Yeah, we most definitely appreciate that, and thank you for your service of what you brought this far as just moving up the you know as part of being part of rank and file to you know to leadership cabinet position <laughs> to now uh, you you are uh, the boss that sits in the chair. And yeah. I'm sure it's a different lens. Yeah, over lunch a few years ago, you did call me out on that, and uh, I think you saw it before. Maybe I did, but it's uh, it's a, it's an absolute honor uh, to have the responsibility to be the chief of uh, my home, my hometown, my home yeah. department, uh, homegrown, third generation, raising fourth. I've got you know two beautiful boys at my uh, the home the, the home commander, my wife. The, she's been coined the first lady of TPD now. Um, <laughs> she's doing an amazing job, and we just got one out of high school going to college, and uh, another one going to the seventh grade. So, yeah, I just I'm waking up every morning, and and like you, super busy. But every day I'm excited to get into the office and get out in the community and and get to work. Yeah, yeah, no, totally awesome, and I'm really excited uh, for you. Um, and uh, everybody's excited for you. You know, I did talk to the mayor uh, when we had our meeting. You know, I said, "You well, you know, Chief Chad Kazmar is my guy." And uh, she said, oh, no, she said, no, he stays as long as he want to stay. I said, I think we're going to be all good then. Um, so we, we're excited for you. Um, you know, uh, you know, the mayor most definitely adores you and look like city council and city government is really, you know, you know, supporting you and things like that. And, it, and that's what it takes. It takes a village. You know, it just can't be a one man band trying to handle everything and uh yeah, it's, it's real crazy. So let's get to some real topics. So um, one of the things that I, I, um, that I know f coming from Chief Magnus to where you are today is hearing about some programs that, uh, you know, TPD is doing and seeing the Fresh Start show is about addressing reform and mm -hmm. addressing issues in, the, in our law enforcement and justice systems. Um, I know you guys were doing something in regards to um, diversion and alternatives to incarceration. So, and I was wondering if you didn't mind for a few moments just talking into that, what that looks like and why is that important and why should people of Tucson know about these things? Yeah, so di the diversion pro uh, program was um, designed by and led by Chief, Chief Kevin Hall, and it's a pilot program in which we're providing the officers the opportunity when they come into contact with a community member who has a personal use amount of narcotics to include, it could be methamphetamine, cocaine, um, opiates, obviously, a crisis in this country, and right. it certainly is a crisis here in Tucson. But what it does is it gives them another tool in their toolbox where they have uh, they have the ability to make the decision if that, you know, if, if arrest is the appropriate response to the situation they're facing or taking that individual to a deflection program. They have to be ready for it. They have to volunteer for it, the person who has the, the drugs. Uh, but the idea is, is somebody ready at that point in their lives to seek treatment? Um, and and it's, it's the beginning stages, and I say beginning because I think this is still a comprehensive problem throughout the country and in our yeah. own community where we really dissect 
the conversation of arrest uh, versus incarceration. And we also talk about a harm reduction model versus leveraging into treatment. And there's still a lot of study and a lot of debate about what that right path is. I don't know that anyone has the right answer, but it's um, commitment to, to different tools and different resources that potentially will give us different outcomes. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Well, most definitely we can always stand to uh, use and hear, you know, more programs that can help people um, not being jail if, be in jail if they don't, or they have to be in jail. If there's ways we can help improve their situation besides just rotting away, sitting in jail, um, you know, as far as if they need help with mental health or they need help with substance abuse and helping people rehabilitate themselves, um, I think it's a great opportunity. I, I agree. Um, I, I, I'm, I've got an amazing family, amazing childhood, but also a, a very normal family that fought addiction, that had uh, mental health challenges and eating disorders and addictions to alcohol, addictions to opiates. I lost my uncle to heroin. My, my little brother's a recovering addict. So uh, I'm certainly not only as a chief and as a father, uh, as a husband, as a brother, um, a son, but I'm impacted in my personal life and now as responsibilities chief to really evaluate the different programs we have and how are we going to get the best outcomes? You know, and the, you know, one of the things, if you're, if, if you're from Tucson or you've been here long enough, it, it, it really can be one degree of separation where everybody knows everybody and it's a very relationship based community. And we forget that it's the 33rd largest city in the country and it yeah. spans 250 square miles. But I think the opportunity that we have here, uh, because it takes leadership from Pima County, takes le uh, city leadership, Mayor Romero, Mike Ortega, the council, um, and a lot of different stakeholders through Laura Conover, public defenders, and, and all of the judges that are, you know, are going to be at your workshop to really work together to share information and to really have legitimate relationships where we can di dissect these different types of programs that we're doing and best understand, are they working? And if they're working, let's do more of it. Yeah. There's not working. Let's step back and evaluate why they're not working um, and make and make adjustments till we get it to work. So it's you know we're a major city, but we're not so big uh, where we can't partner and we can work through some of these things. Which is exactly what we were doing with Judge Liskey from the Pima County uh, Superior Court yesterday, who's uh, the designer of the Steps program. Awesome, and uh, Judge Jaliski is part of the Fresh Start Collaborative. Yeah. She, uh, she's amazing. Yes, she is, and uh, she's she, you know she's a leader in this space, and and you know there's some critics of Steps, and there's some people that think it's great, and and yeah. people in between, but. You know, the idea is, can you give someone, again, who's been arrested um, uh, for the first time uh, with, with personal use narcotics, so it's a pretrial, it's before they go through the system and then where they're leveraged into a drug program, right? It's on the yeah. front end before they enter that system. But the idea is, again, can you, you know, connect folks up with wraparound services? It's, it's as you know, it's nearly impossible to dissect the mental health component and yeah. the substance misuse component, which one came first or which right. one's impacting. But what we all know for sure that's unmistakable, unarguable, is the only way we get people healthy is through an investment of wraparound services. That's exactly right. And uh, we most definitely um, appreciate this. And so um, one of the things is I wanted to um, discuss is your passion is when you became police chief, one of the first things you wanted to do is meet with people of the community. I cannot tell you how powerful and rich that is for our, our I'm serious, because we have a lot of chiefs that or sheriffs, they get these roles and they sit in the office and, you know, they come to the Kumbaya sessions, you know, but they don't meet and with community to have those tough discussions. Um, that's really challenging for both sides of the aisle. And I appreciate you um, from day one. When you became chief, it was like that was one of your agendas for your first 100 days was to come and meet with members of the community, uh, meet with communities of color. Um, we usually don't see that on a proactive. Usually it has to take a death or a shooting um, for a leader of law enforcement to come to the community uh, from a reactive standpoint. I think the city need to know our chief is proactive. I mean, day one, with no issues going on, you said, no, I want to meet with you. As a matter of fact, I want to meet where you guys are at. And I just want to tell you, I appreciate that. Uh, for those that don't know, uh, Chief Kazmaier has been working, meeting with communities of color, um, black and brown communities um, and leaders and talking with them about our issues, our concerns. And um, I want to ask you, you know, for a few minutes, because I don't have that much time left, but um, what what was your motivation at? Why, why do you think we need to be doing that? 
so uh, I'm a I'm a relationship based leader, whether that's inside the department with the elected officials, with um, all all of the community, and and what I know for sure, I've been married for 22 years and with my wife for over 25 is relationships take investment yeah. and the best time to make that investment is you have to you have to make deposits in that savings account before there's a crisis because I employ human beings I, I, I we provide services to other human beings and we know there's going to be failure there's going to be disappointment yeah. but what I do know is if if we're invested in each other and we're listening to each other we have uh, we have conduits of information where we can exchange you know how to get a hold of me you know how to call me yeah. you know how you know who your police leaders are out in the community yeah. um only positive things come from that and you know my my favorite word this year is empathy and really empathy is about understanding somebody else's um, experiences or where they at or how they feel and you can really apply that to a very simple conversation or a very complex uh, conversation and so I think when we take the time to genuinely listen and care about each other's perspectives, uh, that's how we're going to continue to make Tucson an amazing place to live and to work and to play. Um, and I I think it's that continued investment and especially you know look I've I, I've made I've you know I've I've had some really great conversations with abolished police folks here in, in Tucson uh, and defund folks here in Tucson yeah. and I'm I'm committed to continue to have dialogue. Yeah. Um, with those individuals as well, so we can try to find common ground where we can and work on things. And I think in time, um, we're going to continue to, to to develop even those relationships yeah. where there's better understanding of, of their police department and the services that we provide. Um, and so it's just that genuine connection and that realness, and that's, that's really important. It's important for me um, within the department and connecting with my troops. And it's important for, you know, for me to connect with the community um, who they know who their chief is, and they can guide their input guides my decision making yeah. um, as their chief of police no I just thought that that was pretty awesome and I think uh, and, and your work a meeting with the community is not a one hit wonder so it's a continuum right I believe I got something on the calendar coming up where you coming back around you know yeah. talking with us and yeah. you know what do you want from the department what do you need how do we build this relationship between community and police and specifically communities of color we know um, there's tension in, in, uh, in, in many of our communities of color on just optics, experiences, sure. biases, things of that nature. Um, and you could have took the low road and, you know, just said, hey, you know, I'm not coming to those crowds because it's not, not going to be the easiest uh, conversations. But I think that that's what people let and that's what people love and respect for you to come to our communities and say, get, you know, before we talk about the good, let's let's talk about the bad and the ugly first. And we just get through it. We won't agree on every single thing, but we don't have to be a divided and disagreeable community. I, 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 you beautifully said, and um, I had I had some pretty amazing conversations on Saturday afternoon, walking around Kennedy Park, and just getting to interact with uh, with community and and having those very conversations. Yeah. And somebody did tell me that actually they were like, "Hey, it's really cool to see you out here, yeah. uh, walking around." And so I think over time, um, people, you know, uh, people won't be surprised to see that. You know, there'll be times where my my son's with me. There'll be times when my wife's with me. There's times yeah. when we're all out there. Yeah. Um, doing community engagement and cleanup and investment, but um, you know I plan on growing old in this community, <laughs> and uh, so you know the the position and the responsibility is much more significant uh, for me than just this moment. Um, it's it's uh, developing a succession trained uh, police department so that that these relationships are ongoing. The hard part's creating them, yeah. and then it should be you know that that commitment from both sides that we're going to continue to work through challenging times and change is a tough time to be a human being a pandemic um we're we're reevaluating what a police department looks like we're moving beyond a defund movement and in evaluating putting the right work in the right hands in tucson under the leadership of mayor romero and miss ortega and council is doing that through programs like community safety health and wellness we're doing it through place network investigations where we're being methodical and strategic and using data and community input on when we have high crime areas so we're only we're only impacting uh, people committing crime, not community and, and disenfranchised or underinvested portions of our community. So we're seeing investment. There's real dollars here through ARPA. So kudos to city leadership for you know we're we're struggling with unsheltered uh, and a fentanyl pandemic like the rest of the country. So these are all really complex issues. And you said it earlier. I can't do it alone. So you know the other thing about relationships is the more hands that we have on deck trying to come up with creative solutions, the quicker we're going to find them.
Well, thank you. We're about 15 seconds out of this uh, this episode. We thank you for your time. Thank you for your hard work and your service. We're looking forward to continuing to build and work together. So, again, this is Dr. Who with Fresh Start. We thank you for supporting us. We will see you next Saturday at 730.